hello everyone welcome to my video and today you're going to learn how to do these nails so let's get started well first you notice that i already put tips i'm using this um awesome mannequin and i'm going to first File the tips into the shape that I want them to be in. And I'm going to buff the top to make the tip even and flush with the real nail. If you're interested in where I got this hand, I actually got it, hmm, let's see, where did I get it? <laughs> I think I got it on the Wish app. Yes, it was the Wish app. And I think it cost about 20 something dollars. And it came with about 100 replacement fingertips. And um, so far, I like it. It's just that sometimes the nails curl up when you put the tips on. And if you're going to use this hand, you, you still have to rough up the fake nail before you put the tips on. So now at this point, I am ready to start dipping. First, you wanna start in the middle and work your way out. I'm using the ASP dipping kit from Sally's. After you put the resin or basically nail, brush on nail glue on, you're gonna dip in your powder and I'm using clear. There's a lot of different colors you could get. But because you won't actually see the color and I'm painting over them, I'm just going to use clear. And I, I, there's not really a certain amount of times for me to dip. It's all about how many times I have to dip to get the perfect C curve or um, you know a natural nail curve to the nails and once I achieved that I will stop dipping so dip tap to knock off the excess You don't want to go back over the cuticle area. You want it maybe one tenth of an inch away from the cuticle and you don't want it overlapping on the side. So wherever you put the glue resin is where the powder is going to stick. And then um, putting the resin on and dipping the nails is not the final step. The, um, the final step before filing would be to spray on an activator, um, a glue resin activator. You could buy a kit or you can buy a larger amount, uh, which I did after I bought the introductory kit, my resin activator. and brush on nail glue ran out and I just go back and buy more brush on nail glue and I found an ASP 
nail resin in a larger quantity on Amazon.com. And I have a little brush, dust brush. Um, I believe it's for makeup, but I bought it for the nails just to get the dust off of the sides um, when I get done. And it may be a good idea to put maybe a paper towel down. Um, and before you put your brush on nail glue, applicator back in the bottle you you should want to wipe it off on a little piece of paper towel before you put it back in because if you're constantly putting it back in with the powder on a buildup will start happening in the nail glue bottle and you have to throw it away earlier because it basically clumps up and it becomes too thick to use so uh, remember to wipe your brush off on a little piece of paper towel before you put it back in the bottle. And any nip, any brush or nail glue would work. Um, buying a bigger bottle might help so you don't have to constantly go back and get it over and over again. I've gotten this nail glue from Walmart. You can also get it from Dollar General. Um, my favorite place to get things now are Amazon for my nail products because um, I can find exactly what I'm looking for and I can see prices um, of a lot of different people selling the same thing and decide do I want quality or do I want cheap and it's sometimes it's just all about how much money I have but if it's something really important to me I will spend a little bit more to have a better quality product because at the end of the day you're walking around with this on your nails every day you want to make sure you spend um, enough to have a quality product but not overspend you know you got to save your coins where you can so don't overspend on nail products if you don't have to, just because they have a fancy name. Just like um, when I was looking for uh, UV nail resin for my rhinestones, there were some that were made by well-known companies, but they were ridiculously expensive. So I basically just typed in, not the fancy name they put on it, but what it was a UV gel resin for rhinestones and I found um, another company not well known and actually the name on my jar is not even in English I don't know what language it is but hey it works and sometimes you may have to wait a while before your products come when they're coming from outside of the country like China or Korea but if you can save money doing that, why not? That's also where I got my tips. Um, Amazon, these tips were stiletto tips. And um, I just made them into the um, coffin shape that I wanted. And now I'm spraying on the activator that's actually going to um, completely harden the acrylic. So I can, um, and after that dries, I can start filing. So that's what I'm going to wait for after I get done. But, um, you know, when I'm looking for videos, I try to find videos that get straight to the point. 
and so I decided to speed things up for you and here I'm just wiping off my table with some um, some disinfectant wipes getting all the dust from dipping off but if this was a client I would ask her to go wash her hands or I would spray her hands with some um, alcohol that I put in a bottle just to get the dust off of her now I'm taking my drill just to get the shape that I want like I said in the end I wanted to have a natural arch in a nail like in your real nail you know I always didn't understand some people getting their nails done to look fake I try to have my nails look uh, as natural as possible when I get done. And I also got this nail drill, I believe, from The Wish. Yes, I also got this nail drill from The Wish app. And I believe I spent $10 on it. And, and then I bought separately some coarser um, nail sanding bits. And with using the drill, it's just something you really have to practice at. Um, I would say on yourself or a friend before you, you know, used it on your clients because you don't want to nick someone because you're not practicing. And you, when you're using the drill, you want to make sure to make it thinner around the sides in the cuticle area in the back. Because if not, if it's laying on the skin and there's no separation between the nail and the cuticle and the side walls, you're pretty much going to get some lifting. And one step that I did not do on this mannequin, because it's a mannequin, is using the dehydrator and the prep on the nails after you sand the natural nails. And that's because this is, um, this is a mannequin, but if this was a real person, I would use my dehydrator and my prep before I get, um, before I start putting acrylic on the nails, of course. When, this, when you're using the drill or even just filing, you want to look at the nails from different angles. And I normally like to look up or down the nail so I can see the, the shape of it and make sure I'm making things symmetrical and um, giving a, a natural appearance to the nails when I'm done. And after I get done with the drill, I just go back in and buff with my 100 grit side to make things a little bit more smoother. And that's when I go back and I, I shape the sides of the nails and the tip of the nail into the coffin shape that I'm after. And after I get done with the um, 100 grit side of my file, I take a buffer and go over it just to smooth things out so they look 
as smooth as possible and and on all of the drill marks and scraping from the filing I want to get that out as much as possible so the buffer helps with that and this is my buffer file it's a 240 grit nail file It almost makes the nails look, um, and it gets all the bumps out of the nails, and just makes it smooth and natural looking, almost shiny. Um, so when we put the polish over, our gel polish over it, we're not just covering it up and try to cover up perfections, because sometimes the customers want clear polish. And if you didn't smooth things out well enough and shape them well enough, then um, everyone's going to notice all of your mistakes. So it's, a, it's important to shape and then buff out any imperfections as much as possible. And I get all of my nail files um, from Amazon. I just recently bought a kit that came with some... Um, 80 grit nail files it came with a few 180 grit and um, 180 slash 100 grit normal nail files and then it came with a buffer the 240 grit and it came with a shiner for natural nails just to, um, when you're doing a, a regular mani you know just to make the natural nail shiny because that really wouldn't work on this acrylic nails I don't think as much as just using the 240 grit nail file the buffer And that's just my nail brush that I only use to um, to dust the nails when I'm doing acrylic. I wouldn't give someone that brush to go wash their hands because it's all, already so much dust in it. So I have one brush. I have brushes just for washing hands and I have brushes just for dusting while doing the nails. I know in our state, Virginia, um, I am a licensed nail tech, and I do know in our state, we're not allowed to use those big puff dusters um, on our clients. If you want to use them at home, that's fine, but on clients, you can't sanitize in between clients. Um, so that's why we can only use things that we can sanitize, like the plastic nail brush. And you just want to make sure you speak up about things like that when you're getting your nails done your, on your hands or your feet. If you notice them taking things out that look dirty from the beginning and it doesn't look like it's clean or metal that is not coming out of a disinfectant, you want to say, hey, is this clean? Did you just use this on somebody else? Because um, if you have a cut or scrape in your skin and someone else's germs get in your fingers, that can you still have uh, blood and blood vessels in your uh, and veins in your hands, and their germs can enter your bloodstream. So you, I'm not trying to scare you or anything, but this is your body and your health. You know, don't be afraid to say, hey. Can you use a clean nail file on it? Can you use a clean clipper, a clean nail brush? Um, so when I go and get my my um, eyebrows waxed, and I see her using that same dipping stick in be on, on people over and over, I say, hey, can you get out a clean dipping stick when you wax my eyebrows? Because that dipping stick is ripping off a layer 
is going on on people's skin and that means it's going to go on whatever was on that last person is going to go on you so ask them to give you a clean dipping stick and they don't cost that much i don't know why people try to save money with very cheap things that affect people's health but anyhow rant over i'm going to keep going with this video So now we have the nails are filed and buff. Um, but when I looked at all the nails together collectively, they didn't look like they all belonged on the same head because some looked a little bit more square than coffin. So I just went back and made them all the same exact shape on each finger. And some people may say, hey, that's a little anal. But, you know, little things like that would definitely bother me if I paid my hard-earned money to get my nails done. And at the end, my nails weren't even all the same shape. And looking at my hands over and over for two weeks till my next fill-in and noticing that something like that, like my nails are not even all the same shape, some are square, some are coffin, and I asked for them all to be coffin. I wouldn't want anyone to feel that way, so I made sure to make, make them all the same shape when I'm done. You got to treat people how you want to be treated, you know, not just skip steps because you want to rush through it, you know. And if you have clients that are rushing you, just ask them to make their appointments when they have more time so you can give them the attention that they need. Now, if this was a fill-in, it wouldn't take nearly as long, but this is a full set, so... And we're using... Um, and this is after I wiped everything clean of the dust, their shape exactly how I want but like I said on this fake hand I it kind of annoys me that the, the nails kind of can't take the weight of the acrylic and they bend down sometimes but right now I am taking my base coat of my gel polish and I'm putting the base coat on all of my nails And I'm going to use my um, my UV LED light. And I just got this. And I only paid $24 for this nail lamp. Um, it's a sun nail lamp that I got on Amazon.com. And I'm just going to cure the base coat for 60 seconds. And it's actually an 80 watt UV LED light. So... It's much, much faster than my old one, which was only 36 watt and took about five minutes sometimes to dry. And sometimes it didn't dry completely. It was very frustrating. So I had to upgrade and get a better nail lamp. So now I'm taking this Marcotte 
gel polish and I'm just putting on my first coat and if you get some polish on the sides or the finger you want to make sure to, to clean that up with either an orange wood stick or I just used my nails because I was going to redo my nails the next day and make sure you you clean that up on the sides and the cuticle because if you don't wherever you have the gel polish when it goes in the UV lamp that's where it's going to cure it and that's pretty much where it's going to be and they will have to pick it off their skin which can hurt or tear skin or it's, you know it's not going to make them feel comfortable if they have to rip gel off of their skin because it wasn't wiped off before it went in the gel lamp so that's really important this is my first coat and then just like with your acrylic you want to make sure to get it about one tenth of an inch away from the cuticle area and don't let it touch the sides And I see some people try to do their nails and they have a hard time and they're bringing the nail polish very, very slowly down. Um, it's best to do a quick swipe with the nail brush, um, unless you're doing the back and you're trying to make sure to stay away from it. But quicker swipes gives you the best results. And you want to try to have your um, your brush as parallel to the nail as possible. But we're going to do two coats of polish so you don't want them too thin. And you see I'm just wiping when I get on the sides on a napkin. And so now our nails are ready to cure the first. The first layer of our polish our gel polish now we're going to have a second coat and that's really how you see the the, um, the truest form of the color is if you use two coats and it gives you the best coverage I think I really must have been missing the ocean because I've been using blue or a light blue a lot in the summer we went to the beach to Virginia Beach um, a few times and I really enjoy being next to water uh, it's just such a calming feeling so I guess that's why I, I decided to do things blue and light blue and my next video I'm going to be using um, a stamping plate that has mermaids and seahorses and starfish on it on my real nails not on my uh, mannequin and you'll see that come up soon see it clumps up a lot less if you um, if you give it faster swipes with the brush but I am speeding this up so I'm not going super lightning fast but you know just don't drag it because it will clump up so I cured the second coat of color for 60 seconds in my nail lamp And that's the final result before we start putting our bling 
these are iridescent stones i think this was a cheap um, stone set but this is my first time doing a stone design and I, these little trays came with the stones and the pickup stick um, and the pickup stick is actually a wax pencil and that jar is the UV gel resin um, it cures in the light just like the gel polish and I'm just going to use an incense stick I, I tore the bottom off of the incense stick. I didn't know what else I wanted to use because I know when I used it, I was going to have to throw it away. So why not use something that's already disposable, the end of an incense stick. So I used my wax pencil to pick up the stones and put them on the drops of the UV gel resin. And you see I have one in the shape of a heart and then I'm going to put two smaller circular stones. I do have some better stones that are iridescent and they are a lot more shinier and they have a shape to them that makes them look shiny. This is just like just clear so it doesn't have that much shininess to it as the iridescent stones but I just said since these stones are pretty much free I'm just going to practice with them and I decided to do a shape that was like a necklace and to be honest I was thinking about that uh, when I saw the the stone the rhinestone in the shape of a heart the first thing I thought of was the necklace from the Titanic. Um, I think it was called the heart of the sea or the heart of the ocean um, that the, you know all the uh, divers were looking for when they were searching the Titanic wreck. But in the end, um, the older woman who was on the ship when it sank actually just tossed it in the water at the end of the movie. And that's the first thing I thought of. I think I watched that movie. I, I don't know how many times. I love Titanic. So I'm just going to keep going through the process. Taking my stick. Dipping it. Curling a, a drop of the resin. Where I want the stones. And I'm taking my wax pencil, picking up the stones. This pencil, I believe, it came with the trays and the gel resin. And I said, hey, this thing works pretty good because I was going to get one of those fancy uh, pickup, diamond, rhinestone pickup um, sticks. Well, I said, this. And this works great. And so when it goes down, all I have to do is sharpen it. I think this will last me a while. But the only thing I hate about it is that I can't use it to move the stones around. I said, I need something to move the stones around. I said, that's why they have that little metal end on the rhinestone pickup tool. I said, oh, that makes sense. Now, some... I, I went to nail tech school a very, very long time ago, in 2002, I believe, 2002 to 2003, and they didn't teach these type of things around the school, and you know, they're going to have more techniques that come out that no one ever taught me. I'm just going to have to teach myself, watch YouTube videos, read instructions, just play around with it and figure it out. But now I figured out I could use the end of my wax pencil to move my stones around because I had I was using my finger and I kept getting the resin on my finger and this stuff is really sticky. It's not like regular gel. It is it's definitely a glue. And I decided to make it look kind of like a dangly necklace, you know. Let's 
excuse me, I'm having my little sips of uh, <laughs> soda here. And after you get done putting your stones on, make sure you close your resin up and get those stones in the little tray away from you because I have flipped them over and had them go into the carpet and we're picking them up and that sucks. So after I get my stones where I want them, I cure in my UV light for 60 seconds and that is the end result. I love it. <laughs> It's so pretty, don't you agree? And then I decided to, you know, take everything back out again because I said I need to put some stones on the pinky finger. I didn't want to put them on every finger, you know, but I said let me put some in around the cuticle and on the pinky finger. So I kind of did the same thing I did in the middle but I'm going to do it in the back I took a, a heart a big heart stone put that in the middle put two little heart stones on the sides and then I'm going to take some raw some round small stones and put them in the front and the sides I'm not going to lie you guys, I tried to do this hand, the set of nails on this hand, perfect for you guys, you know, I don't want to put any work out there with my name on it, that doesn't look nice, so I really took my time doing these nails, which is why I had to speed it up, and I took a few breaks while making this video, you know, and, um, well now you know, so, um, So I had to um, stop a few times, so in total it took me about three hours to do these nails. You know, just to um, make sure I was getting the camera at the right angle, and the starting and stopping, and getting my materials, and sometimes I would just sit there and look at it like, how do I want to put these stones? I don't know. And then I would, um, I said, okay, I know what I'm gonna do. Turn the camera back on and I would get started. So this is my second tutorial on how to do dipping nails. Um, my next video would be all about how I do my own nails um, using gel. So now I have all the stones that I want on my nails. So what I decided to do since I had some stones in the shape of hearts on the other fingers, I took out my UV gel resin and decided just to put that all over the nail and then I took some nail sequins in the shape of hearts and used my wax pencil just to pick those up and put them in different sizes and shapes all hearts though on the nail like someone just threw confetti on the nail. If you guys notice something, a little theme, I like shiny things. I like bling. I like pretty things. If, if it puts a smile on my face, I use it, you know. 
I think life is too short to be either boring or do something that doesn't make you happy. Some people like simple things. Some people go crazier than this. This is what I like. And you should do what you like. And I decided to glue these down first um, using the gel resin because I tried to just put them on the nail and then do a layer of clear glossy top coat over top of the sequins and they moved all around after I had placed them. It was so frustrating. So I said this time I am going to glue them down and cure them before I put my gel top coat on. And I'm actually going to put two layers of gel top coat over these nail sequins. And now I'm making sure I get them in every little crevice, corner, part of the sequence. And then I cure it for 60 seconds, you know. And this is my second coat because some of the sequins were sticking out of the top coat a little bit. So I just made sure I put a second top coat over those nail sequins because that's what I would do if they were my nails. So I don't want them poking out or catching on something or my hair. I've had that happen. It's really annoying. So I said I need to do something to the ring finger. What am I going to do? Let's do some stamping. So I took this design that I like and I said I'm going to put that on the back of the nail. I'm going to use some white polish. And I believe I got this stamping plate from, where did I get it? Okay, AliExpress. I got this stamping plate from AliExpress and sometimes it's hit or miss because there's just so many different sellers on that site. Um, sometimes they don't etch the designs deep enough so that the nail designs would transfer over to the nail and you could pick it up on your stamper. But this is my favorite stamper, this big clear one. And I got this from Born Pretty. Um, and I got this on the Amazon app. Um, I'm not sure how long ago it was, but it's enough for my scraper to be falling apart right now. <laughs> so, so I believe it had to be a couple of years ago. So, and I just ordered some new stamps and a new stamper and someone sent, um, well, they sent a, some, two new scrapers with that. And if you don't have a scraper, you just have the stamper. You can always use just a, um, a credit card or a gift card that you're not using anymore. And I'm just going to put polish, um, gel top coat polish over the rest of the nails and cure that. Hello, so I... I'm just going to, well, I just took a little break, but you don't know that. <laughs> this is the longest voiceover and longest video I've done, I think. And I really enjoyed it. I'm going to do some more nail tutorials. And if you like it, let me know. 
And if you want to see something, maybe some more basic tutorials on how to get started doing nails or, or something else, you want to do regular acrylic, just let me know. And the thumb, I just did a top coat and cured it. Um, let's see. I say um a lot. I have to get that out of my vocabulary. And we're all done. Hope you enjoyed it. So this is the end result. Please like and subscribe. And give me a thumbs up and comment. Let me know what you thought. And let me know what kind of videos you want to see in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye.